That was supposed to be a coordinated mission, and uh, it was very high priority. It wasn't from the president, but it was it was way up there yeah. because to have the satellites in the right position, to have all these other airplanes and everything, and there was a not a typhoon going through, but really terrible, you know, gusting winds to 50 or 60 miles an hour, driving rain, the tropics. And uh, John and I are the backup crew, and we're looking out from the hangar, and we're saying, boy, I'm sure glad we're not flying today. This is really ugly. Well, the number one airplane gets out there, and because this airplane is loosely put together, what had to grow. Well, the, the number one airplane, all of a sudden, they have an electrical problem. So now we're tasked to go. We get to the end of the runway, and I can't see – I can see maybe 150 feet down the runway. I mean, the rain is just absolutely driving. So I call ops, and I said, okay, what do you want me to do? And the uh, commander comes back and says, I've just talked to Washington. If at all possible, you were to take off. Well, in the meantime, the two-star general in charge of Okinawa and the airfield – has closed the airfield. As far as he's concerned, nobody is to land or to take off. So I'm kind of in between a squall, and I can see probably about two soccer fields in length. And we take off. We head on up. The general is not happy. I find that out later. We go up and refuel, but then when I go to light the afterburners, one of my engines, the afterburners won't work. I tried everything I knew. And so now I've got to go back into that airfield that I just left that was an absolute mess. So as I'm starting to head back in, I'm starting to have electrical problems. And I contact approach control. My uh, instrument landing system isn't really working that, that well for some reason. So I pick up a radar approach. So this guy is guiding me down. Well, Kadena Air Base, this huge air base on Okinawa Air Force Base, has parallel runways. So this guy is bringing me in, and the ceiling is probably about 300 feet, maybe 400 feet at most. What does uh, that mean? What do you mean by that? From the ground, you can only see up about 400 feet. Uh, so now you're trying to come in and land an airplane with these conditions in heavy, in heavy rain. He lines me up on the wrong runway, and as I break out to land – there's a DC-10 sitting on the runway full of passengers. About that time, my attitude indicator quits. They fire the controller because he won't talk to me because I told him I said, there's an t- aircraft on the runway. So I have to fly around underneath the weather, which is really difficult in a normal airplane, but in a spacesuit with this airplane where the visibility is very limited. The good news was this was where I, the base that I used to fly out of before I got in the SR program. So I knew the ground track very well. So I could watch the ground and I knew where the towers were and I could just kind of fly that track around and come in to land. I landed successfully <laughs> and I pulled it in to park it. And I just told my the commander, I said, I don't ever want to do that again. Wow. Cause that was really pretty hairy. Now I, I topped it once. Um, uh, almost equal, flew a mission out of Mildenhall. And I can't remember where we went, but we were coming back and it was at night. There had been a series of uh, thunderstorms. The instrument landing system had been hit by lightning, so it didn't work. Uh, All the Air Force bases in England were below minimums. Now, if you're a regular Air Force pilot, if the airfield goes below minimums- What does that mean, below minimums? The, whatever the weather minimums. Okay. You know, how much ceiling do you have to have and how much forward visibility to safely land the airplane? So if you're a regular Air Force pilot, when it goes below the minimums for that particular runway with the type of approach you're doing, you have to go somewhere else. Okay. For SR pilots, we were allowed to fly and see if we could land the airplane. The radar controller, a British fellow, great controller, he gets me in, and I'm, I'm here to tell you, I saw the 
airfield the runway at the very last minute. He forgot to tell the tower that I was landing. So we roll out on the runway, but the fog is so thick, I can't find the taxiway. So John calls the tower and said, we needed a, uh, a truck to come out and lead us in. And the tower goes, who are you and where are you? We're closed. And he said, well, you may be closed, but we're, we're a tactical airplane sitting on your runway. So come carefully. It's night and a black airplane. Don't run into us. So because two days later, we were flying a very important mission um, for somebody in Washington, D.C. They wanted me to go to Spain. Well, they had a tanker airborne for me to give me enough fuel to get to Spain. But if I'd gone to Spain, it would have taken them two or three days to send a team down to prepare the airplane to fly back to England. And, do, and we would have been late on the mission. So I was, again, this sense, we tried to do what they wanted us to do, if at all possible. Even if that was obviously at a high risk to your life or the, or the there was there was a there was a risk associated with it. Of course, 